half past ten. But now we join Miriam O'Callaghan in studio and Richard Crowley in Gaza for prime time. The experts say this is the man who is largely responsible for our financial collapse. So can Brian Cowan convince you he's still the right man to run the country? Hello and welcome to Primetime. Later in the program, I'll be reporting from here in Gaza on the growing humanitarian crisis. We'll be talking to the UNRWA boss, John Ging, asking him, can the agency cope? And we'll be asking a top political leader of Hamas what they're prepared to do to end this crisis. Well, the two banking reports published yesterday into the causes of our spectacular financial meltdown in this country pulled no punches. They put to bed once and for all the lie that it was international factors that led to our downfall. Pointing the finger of blame firmly at domestic causes, the reports forcefully criticised the cocktail of inept, incompetent and utterly reckless elements that led to our catastrophic economic crash. In this cosy mix were the central bank, the financial regulator, the other banks, those who presided over those banks with reckless abandon, and the government and its fiscal policy it pursued. And at the helm of those disastrous policies was one Brian Cowan, the former Minister for Finance, now Taoiseach, who's reeling tonight at a new opinion poll which is disastrous for him and his government. Now, while we go through the damning reports with the Taoiseach live in studio, and we're also joined by Fine Gael's Richard Bruton and the Sunday Independent's Shane Ross. First, though, Robert Short looks for the devil in the detail. The sorry saga charted in the reports by Messrs Regling and Watson and Professor Patrick Honahan is a catalogue of errors by banks, regulators and politicians. It marks a low point in the government of the state, a time when a booming economy should have brought sustainable prosperity, but instead, through a lack of foresight, sowed the seeds of our current predicament. The first and most obvious culprits identified in the reports are our banks. Homegrown, plain vanilla property lending of immense proportions fueled a credit binge, which should have rung alarm bells, according to Regling and Watson. You know, a lot of people, you know, I'm sure, have carry a lot of guilt about, you know, uh, errors that they personally made, and you know, maybe we'll learn more about that in the future commission. But it, you know, in terms of learning for the future, I think more the issue is, can we have a system that does not depend on, you know, the so much on individual judgment calls. It should be more rigorous that, you know, if you violate this lending policy, that's it. You have to fix it. You don't just have a, a polite exchange of letters between the bank and the regulator. Everything from 100% mortgages to over-reliance on borrowing from abroad should have caught the attention of regulators but didn't. The very structure of the central bank and financial regulator brought in by the coalition government in 2003 contributed to the problem. The detail is not important here. It's the bigger issues about what we've created, what the political establishment has created in terms of the system that was put in place. The regulatory system that was put in place was very lax, very secretive, and very accommodating, and it was done deliberately. That was how it was set up. The current governor of the central bank has produced a report which shakes this institution to its very core. The bank's own reports, as late as 2007, was forecasting the economy would have a soft landing, something Professor Honahan describes as a triumph of hope over reality. Its then sister institution, the financial regulator, emerges as dysfunctional, completely incapable of confronting the banks it was meant to regulate. Our stress testing on the banking system and our extensive financial stability analysis, all of which is outlined in our financial stability report, indicate that the Irish banks are solidly profitable and well capitalised and with no major exposures. Within the system, it was clear problems existed. In one report written back in August 2000, a central bank official wrote of one unnamed financial institution where there were failings at every level in the organisation, from the chief executive and board to staff on the ground. Failures in other cases cited range from the farcical, 
the inspectors were advised that the calculation by Bank E of Mr. X's net worth included an amount in excess of 100 million euro, which represents working capital facilities provided by the bank. To the potentially sinister. It would have been known within the financial regulator that intrusive demands from line staff could be and were set aside after representations were made to senior regulators. Outside the cosy world of banks and regulators, anyone who raised doubts about what had become a property bubble was met with what Professor Honahan described as a defensive approach. One of the most prominent warnings came from UCD professor Morgan Kelly. We've had several years now, the property industry has been talking it up, saying great, buy houses, there's no risk of a fall. You have people now, they're mortgaging their lives away, their parents' life savings are going into these houses. It's been talked up and now it's running out of steam, it's going to fall. Sitting on the sidelines or on the fence, cribbing and moaning is a lost opportunity. In fact, I don't know how people who engage in that uh, don't commit suicide. I think one of the arguments during the good years was we've never had a big property crash in Ireland, therefore we will never, we will never have one. But that is you know, a very uh, insular type of reasoning. Around the world, this has happened many times uh, over the centuries and many times in recent decades. And this is essentially what Morgan Kelly highlighted. He said around the world, this has happened so often and typically ends with a hard crash. And you know, Patrick Conan in his, his report basically is saying, uh, Morgan Kelly should have been listened to. You need to have a whole series of wise heads commenting on what the figures are and commenting on it from perhaps different perspectives. So much that happened in these on what the figures are and commenting on it from perhaps different perspectives. So much that happened in these, in, in these two reports happened behind closed doors. The reports also cast a critical light on the government's economic policy during the boom years. Fiscal policy heightened the vulnerability of the economy. The pattern of tax cuts left revenues increasingly fragile since they were dependent on taxes driven by the property sector and by high consumer spending. These reports question not just one or two fiscal policy decisions made by the government over the course of the boom, but specifically how the tax system was allowed to be transformed from one reliant on traditional forms of taxation to one over-reliant on property tax, tax cuts and tax breaks for even more property investment, often introduced, according to Regling and Watson, on an ad hoc basis in a not fully transparent way. I think we need a really detailed examination, particularly for policy in the future, because if lobbyists like developers can get inside the Department of Finance and say, look, this particular tax break is really good for me. There's no costing done, no examination done. It's done on the basis of political favours, political lobbying. Um, the consequences in this case were disastrous. 